Okay. Janama rupe gunat janma kama beer. It's supposed to be a tune, you see. <coughs> I'm not an expert singer, but if you sing it nicely, it sounds really transcendental. Na na ma ru pe guna jan ma ka ma bi Na ma ru pe guna jan ma ka ma bi Ni ru pe ta vye ta va ta sya shak shina Ni ru pe ta vye ta va ta sya shak shina Mano va cho bya manu me havap mano Anybody like to try? One of the six Goswamis. You've heard of six Goswamis? Yeah? Six Goswamis. Is it this picture there? Yeah, on the end above the radiator. That's the six Goswamis. One of them, I think it was Raghunath Bhatti, he used to sing every verse of the Bhagavatam in three different tunes. Mm. So he would sing one verse three times, three different tunes, and then the next one. And it was like heavenly sound. Transcendental sound. 
So it's an art, just just chanting Bhagavatam. But even if we do it <coughs> imperfectly, it's, it's super purifying to just to chant. Even if you don't understand. Don't understand anything, but chanting it is very potent. Because Shima Bhagavatam is the most powerful of all the scriptures. Yeah, there's many, many Vedas, many, many books. But Srimad Bhagavatam is like, it's said to be uh, the ripened fruit of all the Vedas, or, or the cream. Yeah. The Vedas are like milk, very nourishing, but the cream is the best part. You understand? Yes. yes. Okay, <coughs> so now we do word for word. Na, no. 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 Not. Nama Rupe, the name and form. Name and form. Guna, Guna. 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 with attributes. attributes. Janma, Janma. Janma. Appearance. appearance. Kama Bi, activities or pastimes. Nirupatavye, I'm not able to, I have trouble reading, and look at my Kindle, I have trouble reading their book. I'm not able to be ascertained. Uh, tava, tava Yo. Yo. Tasya, Tasya. Of, him. of him. Shakshina, Shakshina. who is the direct observer. Direct Mana, Mana, of the mind. Pacho Biam, words. Anumeya, hypothesis. Vatmana, the path. Deva, O Lord. Kriyayam, in devotional activities. Pratiyanti, they realize. Atapi, still. He, indeed, you can be realized by the devotees. Well, I'm just going to find the place where Maharaj stopped yesterday. There's so much in these purports. Each purport is like a little book. So many philosophical points. Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, who was Prabhupada's spiritual master, he spoke on one verse for three months. Every day, same verse, but making more and more points. And so any verse, if you get different devotees to give a class on the same verse, they will all give a different class. So Krishna is unlimited. So you can unlimitedly unpack, isn't it? Okay. The Supreme Personality of God. O oh Lord, the demigods say, the impersonalists who are non-devotees cannot understand that your name is identical, identical with your form. So what does this mean? Your name is identical with your form. His name is absolute. Absolute, yeah. He's the absolute truth. So everything about him is Krishna. His name is Krishna, his form is Krishna, his pastimes is Krishna, his Srimad mm. Bhagavatam is Krishna, his temple is Krishna, his prasadam is Krishna. Mm. Mm. Everything is Krishna. Connected to Krishna. Okay. But the non-devotees, Prabhupada says, the impersonalists who are non-devotees, 
cannot understand. They cannot understand it. They are excluded. They are locked out from understanding Krishna. So, not qualified. Right. I mentioned the other day that you have to have devotion to understand Krishna. Because if he sees you're devoted, if he sees your love, he feels inclined to re reciprocate. Somebody asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, how do we know we're really performing devotional service? How do we really know if Krishna is pleased? He says Krishna will reveal himself. You feel Krishna's presence. Or you'll see the deity looks very beautiful and shining. Sometimes the deity seems like he's smiling at you. <laughs> I remember one devotee, she told me she was involved doing some nonsense. And she would go in front of the deities and she, she really felt that Krishna was, you know, frowning at her like <laughs> he was not pleased. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> we can get the feeling, yeah? Krishna is pleased. <coughs> But the non-devotees, they just say, why are you worshipping the stone? <laughs> why are you spending so much money? You worship a stone. You're crazy. So they don't understand. It's because they're not allowed. Krishna is not allowing them to understand. Because demons, they hate Krishna. They hate him. They want to kill him. The impersonalists, they, traditionally the impersonalists say, the absolute, there is an absolute truth, but it has no personal features, has no form, has no pastimes, has no name, it has no qualities. It's just a spiritual oneness. It's a, a thing <laughs> that doesn't have any qualities. So, in effect, they have a complicated philosophy, but what they're saying really is that God does not exist. Because he doesn't have a form or a name or pastimes or qualities. It's, what is the meaning of existence? There's something spiritual, they say, but it's very nondescript. You know? It's just a, a, one, a oneness of an all-pervading oneness. Sometimes they say a life, sometimes they say a consciousness or, <coughs> or intelligence even. But you can't have intelligence without people, you know. You can't have a, a kilo of intelligence, you know. It's not like some, a quantity, a quantifiable thing. It's, it's a quality of a person. A person is intelligent. So if you have intelligence, there has to be a person. It means that, right? If you have feet, it means there's a person. So <coughs> the impersonalists, or Buddhists also, the voidists, they say ultimately everything's zero, everything's void. If you say everything's one or everything's void, it comes to the same. If everything's one without any features, it might as well be void, the voidness, <coughs> nothingness. That's why in Prabhupada's pranams it says Shunyavadi, Nevishesha Shunyavadi. Mm -hmm. Those are the two things that Prabhupada was, uh, his mission was to defeat those Shunyavadi, Nevishesha, because that's what pollutes our minds. <coughs> that's what stops us being pure devotees. <coughs> if we have a tendency to Mayavad. Since your name is absolute, there is no difference between his name and his actual form. In the material world, there is a difference between form and name. The mango fruit is different from the name of mango. If you could just say mango, mango, mango and have a mango, we could. Yeah. We would all be eating mangoes or we could say banana, banana or samosa, samosa. And we'd have a samosa. <laughs> or rasgulla. Whatever. You can do that in the spiritual world. You go to the desire tree, 
and the full kelp of Riksha tree. I say, my dear tree, please will you give me some kajori I want to offer to Krishna and the tree will give you. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Here we would immediately abuse such a facility, wouldn't it? We say, oh, I'll get lots. I'll ask the tree for lots of this and then I'll go and sell it and then I'll go and blah, 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 make a business. Blah, 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 blah. No, it's for Krishna's service only. Mango, mango, mango. But the devotee who knows there is no difference between the name and the form of the Lord chants Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. And realizes that he is always in Krishna's company. That's so nice, huh? We're always with Krishna. Prabhupada said the sky, we always can see the sky. Day and night we can see the sky. Krishna's always there like the sky. For persons who are not very advanced in absolute knowledge of the Supreme, Lord Krishna exhibits his transcendental pastimes. They can simply think of the pastimes of the Lord and get the full benefit. So Prabhupada published Krishna book. Yeah. He, he thought that was very important, that people be, have the pastimes of Krishna. They're all the pastimes of Krishna, the person Krishna. The, in the other cantos of Bhagavatam, there are other forms of Krishna, like Brahadev or Kurma, Nishringadev. But in the tenth canto, it's about Krishna, the person, the naughty little boy who grows up to be a prince in Dwarka, and so many wives and so many things in the Krishna book. Prabhupada wanted people. Prabhupada, we, are we to distribute these Krishna books to the public? Yes, yes. He wanted everybody to have. You think the 10th canto is very confidential just for advanced devotees, but no, in, because of Lord Chaitanya's mood. Yeah? Lord Chaitanya wanted the most fallen people to have love of God. Yeah, that's Lord Chaitanya's, Lord Nityananda, their mission is to give love of God, Krishna Prema, even to the most unqualified people. So we get Krishna book. And if people read it, they can understand something. Bhaktivakas Maharaj said he, the first book he ever got was volume two of Krishna book. He found it in somebody's house. And the person had only read the first page. And then they turned, you know, when you sometimes you turn the corner of the page, they turned the corner and they'd stopped at page one. But he read it all. He said, he said it was difficult. There's so many funny names. And he didn't really understand everything, but he understood there was something very important in the book. There was some real deep philosophy. So he went to the temple became a devotee. So Krishna book is meant for preaching. Yeah. Um, in fact, I think it was a Krishna book when they start, first started uh, distributing books. I think it was Krishna book they had. I think that's how it started. They had some Krishna books and they didn't know what to do with them. They were trying to figure out how they could sell them because Prabhupada wanted them distributed. I think it was Krishna book. Okay. Since there is no difference between the transcendental name and form of the Lord, there is no difference between the transcendental pastimes and the form of the Lord. For those who are less intelligent, like women, <laughs> laborers, or the mercantile class, the great sage Vyasadeva wrote Mahabharat. Anybody read Mahabharat? Mahabharat, yes. I can't help it. I read when you were a child, probably you know all the stories. It's, it's very, very, you know, compulsive reading once you start. You can't stop reading. It's just all stories, uh, but they're true stories. Krishna and the Pandavas and Queen Kunti and you know, and they treat her Astra and Duryodhan and Kana and all the bad things they do to the Pandavas and you get very involved in the story and then they start having these major battles, killing each other, you know, cutting the heads of all these 
warriors and it gets a bit gory. <clears throat> but it's all, it's important to read the Mahabharata because it's the background to Bhagavad Gita. You can understand the Bhagavad Gita better if you understand the, the situation. You can understand what a big thing it was for Arjuna to kill his family members and why they were fighting and who Arjuna is and who Krishna is. It's all um, when you hit, get the historical context, it helps. Because the Bhagavad Gita is actually the center of the, uh, the Mahabharata. You read the first half of Mahabharata, and then, you, then they, Vyasadev puts the Bhagavad Gita there. So really the Mahabharata is, is a, a literary device in one sense. It's a historical record, but also it's a device to get people to have the, read the Bhagavad Gita. People will read all the stories. I think oh, this is very good. And then, oh, there's a, all this philosophy in the middle, so then they read that. They might not have just sat down and read Bhagavad Gita, but because it's in the story form, it's like sometimes you have to give somebody some medicine. You, the pill is, the outside of the pill is sugary. So then you take the pill, you're happy to take the pill because it tastes nice, but inside is the medicine, so the Mahabharata is like that. Inside is the medicine of Bhagavad Gita. Of course, nowadays people are not even qualified properly to understand Bhagavad Gita. Even scholars, yeah. Prabhupada said, uh, I'm going digressing, but Prabhupada said, Arjuna, they spoke the Bhagavad Gita, maybe half an hour, 40 minutes, they spoke it. And, Krishna, and Arjuna understood everything in that short time that they were speaking on the battlefield. Arjuna understood all the concepts and surrendered to Krishna. But now you get scholars, pe people who will read Bhagavad Gita all their life and they write learned books about it, commentaries that they don't understand. Yeah, we're, not, <coughs> we're not qualified to understand. So then we need to chant. Get Lord Chaitanya's mercy, then we can start to understand. So the Mahabharata is history, and simply by studying, hearing, and memorizing the transcendental activities of Krishna, the less intelligent can also rise to the standard of pure devotees. The pure devotees who are always absorbed in the thought of the transcendental lotus feet of Krishna, who are always engaged in devotional service and full Krishna consciousness, are never to be considered in the material world. Sri Rupa Goswami has explained that those who are always engaged in Krishna consciousness by body, minds and activities are can be considered liberated even in this body. There was one sloka, Iha Yasya Haradeva. I can't remember it. But <clears throat> somebody who engages his body, mind and words is considered to be liberated soul. So you may be absorbed washing the pots or something, you know, listening to some transcendental sound vibration while you wash the pots. That's you're in a liberated position. Yeah, you're liberated. Because what you're doing and what you're thinking and what you're hearing is all transcendental, beyond the modes of nature. That's what liberation means. It's basic understanding. So a pure devotee, because he's always thinking of Krishna, he's always liberated. Bhakti yoga is called vimukti. Mukti means just to go beyond the modes of nature, but there's way more than that. Yeah. The Buddhists talk about nirvana, beyond the modes of nature, but we start at nirvana, actually. We go performing devotional service is on the liberated platform. Then you serve Krishna, it's called vimukti. Mukti is liberation, but vimukti is being absorbed in Krishna consciousness, the ultimate liberation. Because you're liberated from your material consciousness. Your consciousness is pure spiritual, spiritually pure. So you're completely liberated. And you have love of God. That's the ultimate freedom, isn't it? To be your real self, 
a loving servant of Krishna. That's the ultimate liberation. Otherwise, you're, uh, you're not functioning as your real self. You're functioning under the dictates of the modes of nature. So you're not liberated. You may think, I do what I like. I go here and I go there and I do this and that. But you're not doing what you like, actually. You're just doing what the modes of nature are dictating you to do. So real liberation good means actually acting in your, as your original self. So a pure devotee does that. Okay, so about this point, <coughs> if you engage in service, you're liberated. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. Those who are engaged in the devotional service of the Lord have already transcended the material position. Krishna appears in order to give a chance to both devotees and non-devotees for realization of the ultimate goal of life. Le but de la vie. In French, isn't it? Le but. Le but de la vie. Le but de la vie. Yeah, the goal of life. If you ask people what is the goal of life, they won't, in general people, you know, ask them what the goal of life Ah, oh, to enjoy myself, or to play football, or to eat ice cream, or, mm. you know, maybe to become a PhD, or to be, <coughs> to be a famous rock star, or something. They have a goal, to be a millionaire, or a billionaire, you know, to go to Mars, um, goal of life. But it's all uh, illusory. Yeah? You're an illusion and the, the goal that you have is also an illusion. So, <coughs> Prabhupada says, progress in illusion <laughs> is not progress. Oh, I've made so much progress, i made so much money and I've got now a house like this and I'm going to do this and that and this and just all the different phases of illusion. Those who are not on the platform get the chance to become acquainted with his activities and thus become elevated to the same position. Yeah. So then Prabhupada quotes the Brahma Samhita. Premanjana Charita Bhakti Virochanena Santa Sadaiva Ridayeshu Vilo Kayanti Yam Shama Sundaram Chintya Guna Sarupam Govinda Madi Purisham Tamaham Pajami <coughs> Although Krishna's transcendental form is presented as black, devotees who are in love with the Supreme Personality of Godhead Appreciate the Lord as Shamasunda having a beautiful blackish form. The form is so beautiful that the Brahma Samhita also states, so Prabhupada's in ecstasy, quoting these verses there from Brahma Samhita about the form of Krishna, seeing Krishna. Vainam Franantam Haravinda Dalayataksham. Bahavatam samasitam buddha sundarankam Kandapakoti kamani abhishesha shopam Govinda madi purusham tamaham pajami Translation I worship Govinda, the primeval lord who plays on his transcendental flute. His eyes are like lotus flowers and he is decorated with peacock plumes. <clears throat> His bodily color resembles the color of a fresh black cloud. Although his bodily features are more beautiful than millions of cupids. This beauty of the Supreme Lord can be seen by devotees who are anointed who are in love with him, whose eyes are anointed with the love of Godhead. So again, this point, but it's, it's, it's being expressed more poetically. But this point, that you have to love Krishna to be able to see him, to see him as he really is. 
The Lord is known as Giridari or Girivaradari. Giri means hill. Dari means holding up. So holding up the hill. <clears throat> or Girivara Dari. Girivara means the best, the best of the mountains, the best of the hills. Holding up the best of the hills, Govardhan. Because Krishna, for the sake of his devotees, lifted Govardhan Hill, devotees appreciate the Lord's inconceivable strength. But non-devotees, in spite of directly perceiving the Lord's inconceivable strength and power, regard the Lord's activities as fictitious. This is the difference between a devotee and a non-devotee. Yeah, devotees will say, it's just, uh, sorry, non-devotees yeah, will say that all these stories about Krishna are mythology. In India they pronounce it mythology. Mythology in France. Mythology. Mythology, yeah. Which is offensive. But again, it's just their ignorance. They're, they're missing, missing the, <coughs> the nectar of life. Yeah. They're just having a boring, mundane life where they're always trying to satisfy the senses but always being frustrated. You don't have Krishna in your life. You actually, life is empty. So they say, no, 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 because they're envious of Krishna. No, no, no. There's, there's no such thing as Krishna. These stories that are meant to inspire people to be good, or you know, it's just some interesting stories for children and simple people. Be, you know, the real thing is, you know, to study and understand that uh, we're all one. Everything is one. All the scientists they study to find out the ultimate, uh, the ultimate formula. What they want to do is to reduce everything down to one mathematical formula. They call it the theory of everything. <coughs> everything they see, they describe in terms of maths, mathematical formulas. So they, they figure that they, ultimately they can describe the whole of reality with one simple formula. Okay, so it's already quarter to nine. Shall we stop? You want to finish this purport? Well, I, just, I just read it straight through. Let me finish, okay? Non-devotees cannot give any nomenclature. That's a, a Latin name, meaning a word meaning name. Non-devotees cannot give any name for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yet the Lord is known as Shamasunda and Giridari. Similarly, the Lord is known as Devaki Nandan and Yashoda Nandan because he accepted the role of a son for his mother Devaki and mother Yashoda. And he is known as Gopal, because he enjoyed the sport of maintaining the cows and calves. Therefore, although he has no mundane name, he is addressed by devotees as Devaki Nandan, Yashoda Nandan, Gopal Shamasunda. These are all transcendental names that only devotees can appreciate and non-devotees cannot. The history of Krishna, the person, has been openly seen by everyone, yet only those who are in love with the Supreme Personality of Godhead can appreciate this history, whereas non-devotees who have not developed their loving qualities, think that the activities, form of, and attributes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are fictitious. Therefore, this verse explains, Na nama rupe guna jama kama bia ne rupe tavye tavatasya dakshina In this connection, Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur has given the example that persons suffering from jaundice cannot taste the sweetness of sugar candy, although everyone knows that sugar candy is sweet. Once I was in Vrindavan, I'm digressing again, but uh, I was in Vrindavan with this devotee and she had jaundice. And I gave her a sweet and I said, does it really taste bitter? She said, yes, it does, it does. <laughs> it's true. Similarly, because of material disease, non-devotees cannot understand the transcendental name, form, attributes, and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
although actually although they actually see the Lord's activities either through authority or through history. The, Purana, the Puranas are old, authentic histories, but non-devotees cannot understand them, especially Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the essence of Vedic knowledge. Non-devotees cannot understand even that the prelim preliminary study of transcendental knowledge, Bhagavad Gita, they simply speculate and present commentaries with absurd distortions. In conclusion, unless one elevates himself to the transcendental platform by practicing bhakti yoga, one cannot understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead or his name, form, attributes or activity. If by chance, by the association of devotees, one can actually understand the Lord and his teachers, one immediately becomes a liberated person. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, Jamma Kama Chame Devyam, Evam Yoga Titatvataha, Jatvadeham Puna Jamma, Naiti Mame Titarjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Srila Rupaka Swami has therefore said that by affection and love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Devotees can express their mind to him with their words. Others, however, cannot do this as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Bhaktiamam abhijanati avaniyas chasmi tat vadaha. Okay. Anybody want to say anything? Have a question? Otherwise, Shimu Bhagavatam ki jai. Shila Prabhupada's purport, ki jai. Yeah. We wouldn't understand. You know, if we just had the Sanskrit verse, we wouldn't understand. Prabhupada translated, he gave devotional translation and commentary purport so we can understand. What would we understand anyway without Prabhupada? You know? So we, you know. So we had Nanama Rupe Gunajama Kam. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada so merciful, so merciful. He took the time, you know, it took, he was, every night he was not sleeping, he was staying awake every night, even he was an old man. You know, he had so many things wrong with his body, he was staying awake every night to translate, giving the word for word of all these complicated Sanskrit, translating into English. Imagine, years he was doing that. For years he was doing it before he came to the West and continued right up until the virtually the day he died, left his body. You know, so you can't say he died because he was eternally eternal, but amazing what Prabhupada did. I thought, I just said, How am I here? How am I know? How do I know about Prabhupada? How do I know about Maharaj Bhagavad? How do I know all these particular swamis? And it's amazing. It's amazing. How do you think? Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs>